Everybody that is playing Classic WoW needs gold at some point. Whether you are level 1 or a level 60 that is saving up for an epic mount, everybody needs to farm gold at some point. In this video I go over some gold farming spots that are even applicable to level 60s. These are some of the most lucrative gold farming spots in the game right now. So with that being said, here are 5 crazy gold farm spots in Classic WoW. Starting off at number 5 is Essence of Water. So guys, this is a very popular gold farming spot in Classic WoW. And whenever I go here, there's usually someone here trying to get Essences of Water. If you guys don't know the deal of Essences of Water, they actually sell for between 10 to 14 gold each, just for one. However, in the world of Azeroth in Classic WoW, there's not many ways to actually get this item to drop, at least in any kind of consistent way, except for some very limited spots on the map. And one of the best ones is in Felwood. The Toxic Horrors have about a 7% chance of dropping an Essence of Water, and these Essences are especially valuable in Phase 1 of Classic WoW due to a lot of pre-raid best and slot items requiring this item. So essentially, you have a super valuable item in extremely limited quantities in the world that you can get in this specific part of Felwood. The only issue is, is that the Toxic Horrors that drop this are very limited in this area. I think there's probably about under 10 of these mobs that can spawn near these pools, and quite a lot of people know the value of Essences of Water at this stage, so getting to farm this place without any competition is going to be quite unlikely. However, that being said, I've had some absolutely amazing hours farming this place, sometimes getting up to 70 gold per hour, when I was on a lair that nobody else was on. So I got kinda lucky with that, but every other time I've been here, there's always been other people trying to farm these as well. Aside from essences of water, they really do not drop that much else. So if you get unlucky with the drops and the 7% drop chance doesn't apply to you, it won't be worthwhile. In addition, there's also a bunch of herbs around the area, such as Plague Bloom and Dream Foil. So that's a nice little bit of extra cash if you're a herbalist as well. Number 4 on this list is the Winter Spring Eco. So guys, Winter Spring has a very interesting mechanic where the mobs in the area can drop different Ecos that can be transferred into buff items for raiders. Now these buff items have a lot of different effects, however the buff items themselves are bind on pickup, but the Eco that you spend to get them are bind on equip, meaning that you can do the farming for other people so that they don't have to. Now before any eco in Winter Spring actually drops, you basically need to complete an attunement quest. You need to get the quest Luck Be With You from Everlook, where you either have to kill the Frost Giants or pick up the crystals from the floor. This is a really deadly quest to do by yourself, and I died a bunch of times trying to do this. But after you finish that, you'll be given the Cache of Mari, where you can get eco to drop from mobs in the area. Now these eco can go from 20 silver to 3 gold each, depending on the type of the eco. One of the most valuable eco that you can get is the Winterfall eco from the Winterfall Furbolgs that you can find in the area. You can even get the Winterfall Firewater after completing the Empty Firewater Flask, which this Winterfall Firewater is a valuable buff that many DPS like to buy. So essentially it is 2 in 1, but it gets better than that. The eco has a very interesting mechanic, where it's actually advantageous to farm these in a group as opposed to solo. Because if you're in a group or a raid and an eco drops from an enemy, the entire group can loot individual ecos from that mob. So this farm is best done in a group where you can just farm these at a very fast speed and get a lot of eco for yourself. It's also worth mentioning that at this furball camp, there is a Black Lotus spawn, which I have picked up quite a few times and have gotten quite a lot of gold from. If you guys don't know anything about Black Lotus, these are used to create the most expensive flasks in the game, that are used by serious tryhard raiders to get an edge when in a raid. However, the only problem is, is that these have a spawn time of over an hour and only spawn in specific locations. It just so happens that there is a spawn point right next to the Winterfall Furbolgs, so it's pretty convenient in that regard. Black Lotus usually goes from 30 to 50 gold each, so if you're lucky enough to pick this up, this is definitely a good bonus on top of all the other stuff that you are farming from these Furbolgs. These Furbolgs also give you reputation with the Timblemore Hold, so that is just another bonus on top of a bonus. 
There are some other farms that you can get in Winter Spring, such as getting the four small eco from these elite giants and the Shawtooth eco as well. However, what I believe to be the best farm in terms of Winter Spring is killing these Winterfall Furbolgs. Three of their eco usually sells for about three gold each, and it has a very high chance of dropping, 20%. That's in combination with all the rune cloth and silver that drops from these guys. The gold per hour you get from here is actually pretty good. And unlike other farms on this list, the more people that you have farming these with you, the better. Okay, so number three on this list is the living essence. So in phase one, essences are going to have quite a high price. I mentioned this in the farm for Essence of Water, however there is actually what I believe to be a slightly better option for farming gold, which is farming the Living Essences. So Living Essences usually drop from high level tree monsters, I don't know the official name of these mobs, so let's just say tree monster. These guys have a small drop chance of a Living Essence, and they usually sell for about 3 to 7 gold each. That's not as much as the essence of water, however there is a catch. There is a lot less competition for the farm spots of this item, so theoretically the gold per hour could be better for most people's circumstances. A good farming spot that I found is right near the essence of water farm in this cave in Felwood. These tree monsters pretty much have no competition, like it's very rare to see anyone else farming these guys, and the few people that you get here are usually just killing them for the quest. But you can get a reliable income from killing these monsters because of how large this cave is. There are so many spawns of these guys that you'll pretty much never run out of them. If you notice that on your server the living essences sell for quite a lot of gold, you might want to take advantage of it by going to this farm spot. On my server there are about 6 gold each which is quite a lot. And best of all, there's pretty much no competition for these guys. Ok so number 2 on this list is the essence of fire. So phase 1 is all about farming essences. In later phases this will not be as popular, however as of this recording, getting any kind of essence is probably going to sell for quite a lot. Now this used to be a good farm spot however it's kind of been overused and the market's somewhat been diluted recently, it could bounce back, but for quite a while this was one of the best spots to farm gold in the game, and I'm talking about the fire elementals in Ungoro Crater. The Scorching Elementals here have a bunch of really cool drops. They have a 6% chance of dropping the Elemental Fire, which usually sells for about 1 to 3 gold, the Heart of Fire which usually sells for only 40 silver, and the Essence of Fire that goes for 3 to 6 gold each, which is a 4% drop chance. So all in all, these Scorching Elementals in Ungoro Crater have quite a few valuable drops. It's quite often to see level 60s farming these, so depending on your time of the server, you might have some competition here. As of this recording, the market is kind of diluted with essences of fire, but as I mentioned, your server might be different, and the market in Classic WoW right now changes all the time. So this is definitely a gold farming spot to consider. Ok so number 1 on this list is the Jade Fire Run. So yet again, this is another farm spot that you can find in Felwood. For some reason, Blizzard put a lot of farming spots in Felwood, I don't know why, but in this tiny little corner of the map, there are three viable farming spots in the game. Now I have to warn you guys that this place is not worth farming unless you are a mana based class, and that is because these guys drop demonic runes that are essentially BOP dark runes that you can get from Scholomance. They do the exact same thing as a dark rune, they sacrifice some of your HP to gain mana, and are often used by mages and healers in the game. So essentially if you get a demonic rune, that saves you from buying a dark rune which costs about 5 gold each. So this is kind of a convoluted way to farm gold, you are essentially farming items that will save you from spending gold. That sounds kind of complicated but if you think about it, it is essentially having more gold in your pocket in the long run. But they do have something that can tangibly add gold to your pocket, and that is the fell cloth that they drop. Now the fell cloth are pretty rare from these jade fire satires, of about a 5% chance of dropping. However fell cloth is used in quite a lot of valuable recipes and are always in demand on any given server. They usually go for about 3 to 6 gold each, which is quite a decent chunk of change. That in combination with all the silver and the rune cloth that they drop, gives you quite a nice gold per hour, especially if you're a caster class. This little area that has the satires also has quite a lot of herb spawns, such as Dreamfoil and Plague Bloom, but it is a small area, so if there's more than 3 people here, 
this will probably not be an efficient farm. You know a gold farming spot is legit when you see level 60s on epic mounts farming there as well. My goal is to be able to buy an epic mount before I hit level 60, that's just going to be a little challenge that I'll give to myself. Good farming in combination with auctioneering, I think I have a decent chance of getting 900 gold before I hit level 60 by using some of these methods. Well guys I hope you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the video please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel. This is Volti, signing out.